वेलकम क्लास माई सर प्रोफेसर डी एस राय प्रोफेसर डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ सिविल इंजीनियरिंग बी बी डी आई टी एम लखनऊ टूडे द सब्जेक्ट आई हैव टेकन फाउंडेशन इंजीनियरिंग इन विच आई विल डिस्कस लेक्चर थर्टी वन रिटेनिंग वॉल्स रेफरेंस दैट आई हैव टेकन डॉक्टर बी सी पुणे मिया सॉयल मैकेनिक्स एंड फाउंडेशन वी एन एस मूर्ति सॉयल मैकेनिक्स एंड फाउंडेशन इंजीनियरिंग आलम सिंह सॉयल मैकेनिक्स एंड फाउंडेशन इंजीनियरिंग डॉक्टर आर के अरोड़ा सॉयल मैकेनिक्स एंड फाउंडेशन इंजीनियरिंग एंड सम मेटेरियल आई बिन टेकन फ्रॉम द इंटरनेट द कंटेंट्स वी विल डिस्कस इयर आर इंट्रोडक्शन ऑफ रिटेनिंग वॉल्स टाइप ऑफ रिटेनिंग वॉल्स ग्रेविटी रिटेनिंग वॉल्स सेमी ग्रेविटी रिटेनिंग वॉल कैंटी लीवर रिटेनिंग वॉल्स काउंटरफोर्ट रिटेनिंग वॉल्स एनालिसिस ऑफ रिटेनिंग वॉल्स विद ए स्मूथ बैक फेस एंड नो सरचार्ज कैंटी लीवर सीट पाइल्स टेम्बरिंग एंड स्टटिंग एंकरिंग कंस्ट्रक्शन ऑफ रिटेनिंग वॉल्स सो दिस टॉपिक्स वी विल डिस्कस इन ब्रीफ फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल इंट्रोडक्शन ऑफ रिटेनिंग वॉल Relatively rigid walls used for supporting the soil mass laterally. Okay, so and this is retained at a different level. The type of retaining walls are gravity retaining wall, semi gravity walls, cantilever retaining walls, and counterfort uh, retaining walls. gravity retaining walls depends upon their weight of stability constructed with pcc and masonry no economical not economical for large height a minimum 0.3 meter suggested top width so we can see here this is the gravity walls you see here this is the minimum matter that is 1 is to 48 the this portion is d by 2 to d this is this portion the depth of this portion bottom portion lies between h by 8 to h by 6 and the base is 0.5 to 0.7 h h is the height of material to be retained semi gravity wall we can see here the in semi uh, gravity wall a reinforcement is placed on the face of materials so we can see here this is the reinforcement part placed in the so it uh, placed in the uh, gravity wall so it is called semi gravity walls a small quantity of reinforcement is provided near the back face may reduce the section of gravity retaining walls cantilever retaining walls made of rcc consist of thin stem and base slab and cast mono lithically economical up to height of 6 to 8 meter we can see here this is the cantilever wall this is the top width is 0.3 meter again minimum batter is 1 is to 48 this is b by 3 this is the the b is 0.4 to 0.7 h and d is h By twelve to h by eight. So this is the uh, a section of a cantilever retaining walls. Now counterfort retaining walls consist of thin vertical slab known as counterfort, spaced across the 
a vertical stem at a regular interval. Counterfort ties the vertical stem with the base slab. Purpose of counterfort is to reduce shear force and bending moment in the vertical stem and the base slab. It is economical up to height of 6 to 8 meter. Counterforts are on the other on the side of the back fill. So, we can see here this is the counterfort retaining wall and this is the counterfort. This is the counterfort which is placed in this section at a interval of 0.3 to 0.6 h and the thickness is 0.2 m minimum. The width is 0.4 to 0.7 h which is the height of, height of surcharge. Counterfort retaining walls. A counterfort retaining wall is a cantilever walls with counterfort or batteries attached to the inside face of the wall to further resist the lateral thrust. Some common materials used for retaining walls are treated lumber, timber, concrete block system, poured concrete, stone and bricks. The wall reduces the bending moment and support the hull slab. By weight of earth or by self weight stability, stability is maintained. From 6 to 8 meter the wall height ranges is quite ok for counterfort retaining wall. These walls are more widely used because it is a hidden beneath the retained material. Counterfort retaining wall are similar to cantilever walls except that they have a thin vertical concrete waves at a regular intervals along with the back side of the wall. The waves are known as counterfort. Three main type of retaining walls are concrete, masonry and stone. The materials you choose will depend on the location of the wall and athletic qualities you prefer. A retaining wall is used to contain soil and hold it in a place in the area where the slope is uh, present. Now, analysis of retaining wall with a smooth back face and no surcharge as we are uh, looking here in diagram uh, no there is no surcharge and the face is uh, as smooth. The active pressure is acting at height of h by 3 from the bottom and passive pressure is acting at opposite direction beneath the soil. So, here is the active pressure. Now, the resultant of self weight and the active pressure will cut the baseline at point D. Which is opposite to the bearing capacity of allowable bearing capacity of the soil and the component of uh, this uh, resultant allowable bearing capacity this is R V dash and R H dash. So, we can see here the in equilibrium condition R dash V will be equal to W and R dash H will be equal to active uh, pressure. From the third equilibrium condition the moment equation uh, relative to the center C R dash V into X bar will be equal to W into A minus active pressure H by 3 where it is acting. So, X bar will be equal to W into A 
minus P A H by 3 divided by R dash B where X is the distance of point D from the toe. The eccentricity E will be equal to B by 2 minus X bar where B is the width of the base. The now the condition first condition there should not be a sliding of the wall. The wall must be safe against the sliding. So, mu R B should be greater than R H here mu is the coefficient of friction between the soil and the wall. Now, the factor of safety, safety against the sliding is given by F s mu R v by R h, where mu is the coefficient of friction. So, recommended factor of safety is 1.5. The second check is no overturning, the wall must be safe against overturning about the toe. So, here F 0 should be equal to sum of m r divided by sum over m 0, where sum of over m r sum of the resisting moment about the two and uh, uh, sum of over m 0 sum of the overturning moment about the two. The third check is no bearing capacity failure. So, here the pressure caused by R v at the toe of the wall must not exceed the allowable bearing capacity of the soil that should P maximum should be R v by B 1 plus 6 E divided by B. So, the factor of safety against the bearing is given by F B is equal to Q n a by p maximum where q n a is a allowable bearing capacity. The recommended value of factor of safety is 3 here in this case. If there is no settlement or settlement should be in the allowable limit. Analysis there should not be a tension because uh, concrete is very weak in the tension, no tension at the base of the wall. When the eccentricity is greater than B by 6, the tension developed at the toe and tension is not desirable at all. Tensile strength of soil is very small and tensile cracks would develop. The effective base area is reduced. In such case, maximum stress is given by P max 4 by 3 R B by B minus 2 E, E is eccentricity. So, this is an analysis of a retaining wall. Now, come to the cantilever seat pile. The cantilever seat piles wall is one of the most famous flexible retaining structure that usually use secured deep excavation down to about 5 meter. It could be constructed using a steel profile or tangent uh, piles driven precast or board piles. Timbering and strutting a method of giving the temporary support to the side of deep trench or when subsoil is loose or very soft is known as timbering, sometimes it is called soaring also and strutting. It consists a timber plank and a strut to give a temporary support to the side of trench. When the depth of trench is large or when the subsoil is loose, the side of the trench may cave in. This problem can be solved by adopting a suitable method of timbering. 
timbering of trenches sometimes also known as soaring consists of providing timber planks or board and a strut to give a temporary support to the side of the trench the timber timbering and strutting timbering of deep trenches can be done with the help of following method and they are a stay bracing box seating vertical seating a runner system and seat a uh, piling we can see here the there are a different uh, type of the a uh, timbering has been done here this is a this is a b c d so these are the tempering and uh, strutting which will provide a form sides of a trench now anchoring anchors are often used for excavation support as the part of a permanent retaining walls are raised up lift forces on the foundation the construction of retaining walls retaining walls construction there are many way and method of building a retaining wall it all depends on the retaining walls types the example for the construction of re reinforced block retaining wall the design is based on the cantilever principle the wall is connected to the foundation and look like a l shape the retained earth sitting on the foundation helps a retaining walls design a proper the alternative to the design is a gravity retaining wall but this uses more blocks the first step is excavation excavation of surrounding area is prepared for a retaining wall to ensure the formation of ground form lay 50 to 100 mm of blinding concrete over the formation to give the flat and the level surface and this also protects the formation and stop any contamination of the reinforcement the second step is for work place form work for the raft ensure that is 40 mm of cover for the reinforcement should be provided the third step is reinforcement fix the starter bars in position it is important that they are placed accurately to do this fix supporting timbers from the edge for works depending on the size of the block the center will be either 600 mm or 800 mm the dimension from the face of the wall to be the bar location is 450 mm for the 600 mm block and 650 mm for 800 mm block the fourth step is concrete pour concrete into the form work make sure the started bar are not removed it is worth checking to starter bars before concrete sets level of concrete to the top of the form work and leave with a light tamp finish the strength of concrete will be given by the design but uh, it should be m40 mix the fifth is construction of the first layer lay the first layer of the block place them over the started bars on the completion of the first layer lay the block drainage a uh, pipe 
it is important that any water behind the wall is taken away to the to stop hydrostatic pressure. This is done by laying a perforated pipe and backing filling with a clean stone to act as a filter. The clean stone fill can be wrapped in geotextile filter out any fine particles from the soil that will eventually block the stone filter. The six <coughs> complete the construction, build the wall to the full height and backfill with the clean stone and retain earth as you go. Fit the vertical rebar to design and grout in using non sinkable grout. This is important for a structural stability of the completed wall and to stop the rebar from corrosion. So, this is the construction of uh, retaining walls. This is this is the portion, these are the portions which are uh, taken for the uh, construction part. Next is this is the uh, we can see here the retaining wall and how reinforcement is placed and how the uh, perforated uh, pipes are placed to drain of water. So, in this way we can say the construction of retaining wall is a very important uh, factor to be considered while the uh, construction of the retaining walls. There is there are some things which is very important to take care of that are the concreting should be continuous, the pipes should be perforated and in inclined fashion. If it is not in inclined, then the water coming in the perforated pipe will not come out. And so, uh, the purpose will killed. So, the second thing is the retaining wall should be properly cured because there are abrupt tension and compression occurred when the material is retained by this uh, retaining walls. So, we can say here that the construction part is a very important for the retaining walls that then it will work properly otherwise uh, there will there would be some cracks and which will not work properly. So, thank you very much.